for their ultimate challenge. Well, guys, this is it. Our last three days in New Zealand, and I think the thing that we have learned over the past few weeks is just how hard it is to get gold. <laughs> <laughs> but you did well. In here, we've got about six grams of gold that you found in rivers, on the beach and in rocks, and the treasure hunt yielded this little nugget. So over the next three days, what you've got to do is to purify and make something from this gold. Now, you've got three days. You've got all the bits and pieces in the sawmill, and any natural resources that will help you. And of course, there is the magic trunk. It's bricks, guys. <laughs> it's all the bricks, guys. You're the alchemist. Mike B knows you need heat to purify gold, and the bricks give him the idea to build a furnace. Yeah. Do that. Yeah. And leather. I'll make a leather this settee. Do, well, for making a furnace, this will do for making some bellows out of, I suppose. Bellows, oh, yeah. 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 Some thread, some really tough thread. Is that all we've oh, got? <coughs> this isn't much that stuff. It? <laughs> Bricks, leather. Well, there isn't much Fred. gold. <laughs> <laughs> so they've decided to build a furnace to purify the gold. They'll worry about what to make with it later. Get a shovel. Let's not do that. Mike B's got a master plan to purify the gold using chemicals and intense heat. It's going to need the combined brain power and muscle power of the scientists to pull it off. How does that look, Helen? <laughs> That's pretty darn good, <laughs> <laughs> not bad. OK, we've got the foundations. What's the next stage? Well, the reason for building the furnace is that the gold we've got is just not going to be workable. Right. I mean, it's flakes. But if we get it to a high temperature, this gold, then we can actually purify it. It's a process called smelting. Right, because there's, there's still, what, sort of bits oh, of sand and... There's all kinds of things there, and other metals other than gold, right. which we want to drive off. OK. But the furnace design is important. We've got a double layer of fire bricks. The gold will sit there and the fuel will go in here. And then we line it inside and out with clay for insulation. Mm -hmm. And this is our base of sand. We're then going to put a thin layer of clay on to stop losing heat through the ground. So what sort of temperatures do you need to get up to to purify and smelt this gold? Well, gold melts at about 1060 Celsius. Right. So if we can get up to 1100, 1150 degrees Celsius. 1150 degrees Celsius. Yeah, but we can do that because we'll build into this structure some bellows. And then when they're operating, they'll create this updraft as well. And that will uh, increase the temperature. Okay. But it is trial and error, but then that's science. To get to a whopping 1,100 degrees plus, every detail of the design's got to be just right. Bellows are really important in a furnace because flames are dependent on oxygen to burn, you know. Things won't burn in the absence of oxygen. And in a sealed furnace, you'd pretty soon run out of oxygen. I hope they'll work. I mean, they're pretty simple things. Certainly without bellows, we'll never get the temperatures we want. Cathy and Ellen work on clay from the sawmill. It should help insulate the furnace, but they've spotted a potential problem. We're trying to get the air bubbles out of the clay, because if there are any air pockets left in there, when the kiln gets really hot, they'll expand and they could just shatter everything. But it's quite hard work. There's a lot of air in there. This one's pretty good. But it's not only the air bubbles Cathy's worried about. I'm not as confident about the furnace as Mike. Just because when I tried to make fires before, getting up just to, say, 700, 800 degrees C was really, really hard, and I spent days and days not doing it. So I think just thinking we can get to 1,000 whatever is, I think, quite a challenge. But Mike B has total faith that with his special design, they can hit that critical temperature. The building begins while Mike L starts on the bellows. By the end of today, the inner chamber has got to be finished so the clay insulation can dry overnight. If you ever think of building a kiln at home, think that it might be fun, try another hobby. Well, at least these bellows are blowing. But what you don't want is the bellows sucking back out from the furnace, because that's hot. That'll probably damage the bellows. It'll also cool the furnace down. So I've made this little one-way valve here. Air can go past, but as soon as you start pumping, 
this valve flaps shut again. So it forces air into the furnace. It's, well, a very, very simple one-way valve, a little bit like ones that we have in our heart. Wow, look at these. <laughs> They're fantastic. <laughs> They're bigger than the damn furnace. Huge. <laughs> Just check if they marry up. Oh, so yes. will, will they fit in? Oh. Our oh, crisp will be in there with the gold. Yeah, right. And are the fuel's going to be in the bottom and around here, is it, as yeah, well? right up to the level. So this makes sense, then, that it's blowing in the middle of the fire, yeah. not and just And by having the two, you've got a continuous supply. Yeah, one will be breathing supply. out while one's breathing in, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. If that doesn't well, work, good. I'll resign. <laughs> <laughs> It's nearly the end of day one, and we've almost finished the clay coating that will contain the raging heat of the furnace. Well, that's looking pretty good. So we've just got a little bit more to cover here, and then have we got to build the second layer of bricks, Mike? No, we won't do that today, because okay. we're going to set a fire in here to dry this out. All right. So if we leave that until tomorrow, it'll help uh, Help dry the process. All right, so we just need to cover that last little bit, build the chimney. And we're away. And it's done! We're hey! To speed up the drying process, we're going to use hot coals, but it's risky. Oh, wow. Too much heat and the clay might crack. <laughs> so this, hopefully... ..will dry the uh, clay out. So you're going to leave this now overnight? Yeah. And then tomorrow, if it's all still yeah. standing, <laughs> <laughs> we can build the second layer of bricks. Yeah. Work done and the team get together minus Jonathan, who's getting an early night. And I just love the way that different people approach things in different ways, and often it's tense sometimes, but hey, that's OK. Mm. It is difficult working together when you've got five mm. strong personalities, each with a different perception of what the mm. challenge is yeah. and, and the best way to go about it. What you guys want to do is get on and build. Mm. So we're saying, let's plan and brainstorm, it's really important, it saves time. Yeah. And you're saying, no, there's no more time in the day. Is it a gender thing? No, I don't no. think it is. No, 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 I don't think so. I think it's, it's just a personality thing. Yeah. I think if you've got three days, you really have to plan. Yeah. And I'm not sure there's a right or wrong. Mm. It's just but the I, approach. I feel like if you spend the time brainstorming at the beginning, actually then everybody's on board. Then you don't waste time later on people saying, but, 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 but. I think our furnace looks like a microwave oven designed by a committee, don't <laughs> A new day and a new problem. Well, it's still standing. It's still pretty wet though, isn't it? Yeah, it is yeah. quite wet. Oh, there's some big cracks in there. Oh, yeah. Um, well, we have no alternative but to go ahead with it. But uh, if we charge it up with some hot charcoal and we warm it up slowly, yeah. I think that will help. OK. Yeah. So by lunchtime, we're ready to go with the, uh, the smelting process. All right. So if you can build that extra outer wall... Yeah. Yep. ..for extra th uh, thermal insulation... Fine. ..well, I go and light some charcoal. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Right. In case the cracks prove disastrous, Cathy and Ellen are working on Plan B. Their idea is to make gold leaf from the six-gram nugget of pure gold found in last week's treasure hunt. It's ambitious, but gold is one of the only metals that can be flattened into leaf. They decide to start with just half of the nugget. So let's split it into two, so we get half each to work on. Hey. Absolutely beautiful. Should I make predictions on how big our gold leaves are going to end up being? No. <laughs> Using powder to stop the nugget from sticking and leather to protect it, the gold leaf experiment begins. A super furnace needs super insulation. The air trap between the two walls will help seal in the heat. All we're missing now is the chimney to channel the vital updraft created by the bellows. And after an exhausting hour of hammering... It's breaking up horribly, isn't it? Yeah. What, do you have any ideas? Well, gold is so easy to bend normally. Mm -hmm. um, so what we could do is um, heat it up a bit. OK. And that should make it a little bit more malleable. Yeah. Well, let's try heating it up. OK. They can't work with these broken bits, mm -hmm. so as not to waste them, they decide to add them to the gold flakes going into the furnace. That means starting from scratch with the other half of the nugget. Yeah. OK, moment of truth. Yeah, it's looking good, this side. How's it looking your side? It's looking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's OK. They're in, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, and what do you reckon to this as well? What on a little earth development. is that? That is a thermometer. You're joking. It looks like a piece of rock with a 
bit of crumpled tin foil on it. Well, that's what it is pretty well. <laughs> because the thing is, with this with this furnace, it's going to take a long time to get up to temperature. Yeah. A long time to take it down. We've only really got one day. So it'd be a real tragedy if we didn't quite pump hard enough or we took the gold out too early. So this simple thermometer. Yeah. I've got four different metals. Yeah. When the metal melts, it goes down a little hole here. Okay. This right. is lead. Okay. It melts at a low temperature, 330 right. degrees or something. Aluminium melts at a higher temperature, about halfway to the temperature we want. Then we've got brass and finally copper. Yeah. Gold's melting point is in between those two. That's so if we pull this out, the copper's melted, we know we're up to temperature. So ingenious, isn't that clever? Simple, isn't it? It's absolutely so, brilliant. Yeah. We've missed you two throwing clay around in the background. We've finished the furnace, it's looking fantastic. Oh, great, great. Yeah. How about you guys? How's the gold leaf coming along? Well, OK. I mean, we didn't have great success with the first bits of gold that we tried. They just fractured really, really easily. Yeah. But we have this chunk and we're going to warm it up. Yeah. So it should be slightly easier for it to be hammered out that way. No, there's no way we're going to get it up to its melting point. No, no. no. So you don't need to actually melt it, you just want to soften it like butter or something. That's it. Right. But last time we were just going bang, bang, bang. And this time we're just going to tap it gently. Using fertiliser and glass, Mike's about to work magic with the gold. We're now at the point where we're purifying the gold. The gold contains metal impurities, which we don't want. So I'm going to add a few, like, a few ingredients to this uh, recipe that will help purify the gold. I've got in this fireproof crucible some broken glass and I'm going to add to it some fertiliser. And now we put all of the gold that we've collected into the crucible. Now what will happen at a high temperature where gold is molten is the fertiliser won't react with the gold but it will react with the impurities in the gold which are essentially other metals. Uh, and those impurities uh, once they've reacted, will all dissolve in the molten glass. So what we'll end up with is the molten gold at the bottom of the crucible, because it's heavy, and then the molten glass at the top, containing all of the impurities that have been removed from the gold. Well, big moment! <laughs> but the impurities can only be sucked out of the gold and captured by the molten glass if we hit that critical temperature of 1,100 yeah. degrees. It's in. Down, down, down. To get a head start, coals have been burning all morning. They're now red hot. Whoa! Ah, here we go. Let's move this out. Big flame, all right. It's hot, that's a good thing. It's hot. Oh, fantastic. Thank you. So it feels nice and hot. Yeah. Next is Mike's ingenious temperature gauge. Nice thermometer. It'll be our only way of telling if it's hot enough to smelt the gold. Oh, lots of funny noises coming up. Can you see Hope the that's not the cracking of the crucible? <laughs> it's good to have such a positive spirit on board, Ms Humble. <laughs> All right, yeah. have fun. Right, Mike, some kind of rhythm here, is it? Like yeah, I think so. If you say when you go down... Down. Down. Oh, this is rocking and rolling. Down. How long are we going to have to be here for? Three hours. It's late, right? Hopefully, each puff of our bellows should help inch up the temperature. Back with the gold leaf, the second half of the nugget has been heated up. Shall we see? <laughs> Doesn't seem very different. It's not even warm to touch. No. Back in the fire. Just when things were looking good at the furnace... Oh, now we have a small problem here. The leather's on fire. Oh no! <laughs> I've sucked a piece of hot coal in. <laughs> well, this is a good warning. Now they have a leather sofa. <laughs> Thanks, Jonathan. Mike L goes it alone while the other bellows get patched up with gaffer tape donated by the camera crew. Jonathan wants to prove the bellows are doing their job. His plan involves an electrical meter and a light bulb. It would be nice if we had some monitor to see whether the temperature was actually going up. So all I've done is I've taken a standard household light bulb and smashed it up and got the filament, which is made of tungsten, and it's wire, it's metal. And tungsten doesn't melt until about 3,000 degrees, so it won't melt in the fire. 
And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to wire it up to the meter. OK. That's the air temperature. And if I heat it with the lighter, you'll see that the meter will change quite quickly. You can see that. So in principle, by putting it in the kiln, we can actually monitor that the temperature is actually rising. OK. Hey, hey. So what's this, Jonathan? When you bellow, if the temperature goes up, we should be able to measure that on there. So we can tell whether all your hard work is working, which I think it probably is. But that fire's still well alight. Can... OK. Can you see the needle moving as I put it in? Actually, it's stopped now, so start bellowing. Well, and the needle's wobbling around, so it's definitely changing the temperature as you bellow. Almost in unison with your bellowing, actually. It is. Yeah, it is. It is. Inspired by firm evidence that the bellows are working, a fresh team takes over. Ready to be impressed? Let's yeah. switch. The gold's going really well. Oh, fantastic. Well done, you. OK. They've got to keep that temperature rising to purify the gold. So just how hot is it inside the furnace? Hey guys, can you stop bellowing for a little while, please? I'm going to try and clear it out. How does it feel, Mike? Well, this outer wall is cool. You can't feel the heat. That insulation must have been really good. Right. OK, let's see if we can get a guesstimate at the temperature. It's actually not that hot down the bottom compared to the top, nowhere near. But it's made the steel very floppy. Well, it's no surprise the lead's melted. Yep. But that only means 330 degrees, doesn't right. it? The aluminium, that's definitely melted, but it hasn't disappeared. So that's Six. 660. But the brass is still there. All right. And the copper it hasn't melted. So, and the brass melts at 1027 Celsius, yeah. so it isn't up to 1027. But that's right at the bottom. That's below the ba bellows. It's below most of the coal. It's not hot enough at the bottom, but what about in the middle where the crucible's buried? I'll see if I can get this in the top. Looks positively dangerous there, doesn't it? Let's see if it fits here. This is just the wrong size. Aha! There we go. Can you start again, Ellen, and see? That's still not going to be as hot as where the crucible is, but it's going to be hotter than the bottom, hopefully. As they wait for a reading, Jonathan can now think about the ultimate challenge. The team's picked him to make something from the gold, if they ever manage to purify it. Kathy's still working away on the gold leaf. Like Jonathan, she and Ellen have no idea yet exactly what to make with it. Back at the furnace, everyone's hoping that all that pumping will have raised the temperature. Hey, you guys, can you stop bellowing for a second? I'll see what temperature you hit. OK. Well, this isn't really in the fire. It's near the top. Oh, my word. What? Well, it's hot, but I can't really tell you how hot because I can't get it out. It's melted. <laughs> <laughs> it's really quite badly messed up. <laughs> Are you all right there? Is that hot? It's hot. <laughs> That's it. Ready? If you pinch, I'll pull. Oh, my word. The brass is gone, and the aluminium. And on top of that, whatever this is made of is melted. But the copper still hasn't. Unfortunately, the brass has fallen out of the brick and has been lost in the fire, so we're still in the dark about whether the furnace is hot enough to purify the gold. Let's bellow away. Our only hope is to keep pumping and feeding the furnace with fuel. OK. Our mission is to get it as hot as we can before the end of the day. There we go, there we go. we're getting there. We'll have to wait until the furnace has cooled down overnight before we can see if the gold's been purified. After an exhausting day, the team reflect on their success as gold prospectors. If we had any of these challenges, especially the gold one, gold challenges now, we, we could do, do, a lot do better than, oh, we could do yeah, so yeah. much better. You mean now that we've learned something about gold? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now that we know where to find it, how to get it out. Yeah.
And then hopefully what you can do with it at the end. So what are you going to make with the girl, Jonathan? Use it as it comes out, whatever yeah. shape. And we'll, that will determine what we make. <laughs> <laughs> it might be a little sun. <laughs> it might be what? A little sun shape. It sounds like you're going to use it. Or a amoeba shape. <laughs> the gold amoeba. A radius. You all are using the same strategy we, we have decided on. Yeah. This is Whatever what it looks happens. like, that's what it looks like. <laughs> 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 Last day, the culmination of six weeks' effort. So did anyone get any sleep last night at all? Yep. Too excited, Ken. <laughs> Too excited. Well, should we do it? What do you think might be? Yeah, let's open it up okay. see what we got. Ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. <laughs> Let me through. I'm a doctor. <laughs> oh, oh, oh my there it is! Hey. Wow! wow. wow. Oh, look at that. It's in one piece. Smash it open. That works. That works. Oh, 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 right. oh, 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 look at the gold! Yeah, you can see it peeping through. The gold's encased in that glass, is yeah, it? Yeah, a small bead of pure gold. <gasps> oh, wow! Oh, that's oh, that's not bad. bad. Hey, it's that bad. is Look at this amazing. one. This one's the pear shaped one. Well, that's obviously purified, isn't it? I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Visually, it's it looks like that. I mean, and that's all come from our gold powder. Yeah, that's uh, the, our collective effort over there. And there's there. so oh, much. And little, little balls of it running around. Hey, well done. <laughs> you did it. So now we've got all this lovely pure gold. What's the plan? It depends on what Jonathan wants in terms of his design. It'd be easier for me if we could get it as one blob. Yeah? Well, I could fire the furnace up again. Well, there is one other way, and that is now that it's purified, yeah. we might be able to just heat it all together into a blob using a car battery to melt it. Mm -hmm. So it's worth giving that a try as well. But we'll light the furnace anyway as a fallback. Yeah, I think so. Okay. It's pure, but to work it, it needs to be in one piece. In the sawmill, our electrical wizard Jonathan is ripping batteries apart. He's got an idea how to generate lots of heat, enough to fuse gold together. <laughs> Ellen's making good progress with the gold leaf. This is working pretty well. We've made one major improvement, and that's we put down galvanized steel because the anvil was really, really pocked. And so we were getting little dents in the, in the gold. So, back in the fire, it's going really well. Time to find out exactly what Jonathan is up to. Can I just ask you what you meant by possibly being able to melt gold with a battery? Well, what I've got, mm. I've got these, these are called carbon rods. Yeah. And they're just carbon or graphite from lantern batteries. What, just regular normal batteries? Yeah, I just took yeah. them apart. We've got a car battery here as well. Yeah. And there's a lot of power in a car battery. So you can use it to heat things up. OK. It's not dangerous from a shock point of view. But there's an enormous amount of power there. You need it to start up a car. But carbon doesn't melt. And if I connect up carbon, rods together to get a oh, lovely wow. start. Oh, that's fantastic. That's really hot. And it's that up to 3,000 degrees. Wow, so, so that would be enough to melt the gold, you It should be, yeah. Hot. All right, well, should we, um, should we try it? I haven't done it before, so okay. the cross fingers it's going to work. Oh, beautiful. Oh, it's working. Yeah, yeah. You can see it melting. I'm not coming too close. Wow. Wow. Oh, it's, the gold's really glowing. Yeah, it's melting. Look at that. Look. OK, that's pretty much all of it. Wow. Look at that. It's absolutely glowing red. This isn't too hot now, but anyway. Well, that's worked. And look, the gold's really come through because when it came out, it was a really horrible colour. I think we're reaching a point where we have to make a decision about what we're going to do with this. Okay. We can keep beating it to get our gold leaf. Mm hmm. Or we could stop now and make a piece of jewellery out of it because it's about the right thickness for jewellery. Yeah. And it won't work as jewellery if it gets any thinner. In terms of gold leaf, I don't think we have the tools to do it. I would prefer a set of earrings than a pendant. Uh, me too. 
Yeah. Okay. So we could just maybe kind of cut in the middle somewhere, mm. put a couple of holes in. And then I think we should leave the outside, not geometric or anything, not straight lines. It's really nice as it is. All right, let's do it. Jonathan's working on a Kiwi concept for the other souvenir. I've copied lots of Maori jade carvings, and one of them in particular is really beautiful. It's like a, a sort of fish hook. And I think we can get that out of, out of this here. So it's got the basic fish hook shape. So by process of drilling and filing, and obviously polishing it up a lot, we should be able to get that out of it. Finally, the team complete their ultimate challenge. Beautiful. To make souvenirs from pure <laughs> New Zealand gold. <laughs> I was sitting here looking at it for ages, thinking which bit should I take off? Should it be over there or over here? Anyway, I've started. Oh, yeah. The pressure's on a bit, because this is all our six weeks' work. It's beautiful, so I'm going to go with that. Well, this is it. The end of six weeks hard graft. You have <laughs> built some magnificent things, I have to say. And I do think Mikey B, the furnace, really did top it off. That was a <laughs> just <laughs> fabulous achievement, helped, of course, by perfect bellowing bellows. And I have to say, my shoulders are still quite sore <laughs> after that. And we have some results of that beautiful, smelted, pure New Zealand gold. Let's have a look. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Fabulous. Oh, Can yeah. we take they them off and have a look beautiful. at them? Let's see. So what did you do with this one? And um, bashed out a little spinal. Nice. Wow. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Look at that. Beautiful. <laughs> That's fabulous. Gorgeous. And how did you get along, Jonathan? Well, I made a little shrimp. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that lovely? That's oh, like lovely. a Maori fish hook. I think that's beautiful. Ooh. With a garnet eye. Garnet eye. Absolutely beautiful. We'll Gorgeous put it on there because that is the culmination of a magnificent effort yeah. to find and make beautiful things from pure New Zealand gold, smelted by ourselves. I think we deserve a big round of applause. <laughs> For your chance to win our golden jewellery, log on to the Rough Science website now and answer some questions. These one-off originals are a product of the scientists' ingenuity, enthusiasm and determination. <laughs> All you have to do is enter our online competition on www.open2.net and this unique prize could be yours. While online, you can also request a free Rough Science booklet and get details of all Open University programmes.